Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the overlay options found in Lightroom's masking. Now, in older versions of Lightroom, we didn't have anything called masking. We had local adjustments, the radial filter, the graduated filter, and the brush. And those local adjustment tools did have overlays, but it was a really simple red overlay and you really couldn't do much with it. With Lightroom's new masking, we have a new overlay system that offers a lot of functionality. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, we're actually not going to be working on this image. I wanted to show you this image of the complete sculpture so you can just see it because we're going to work on this image, which is, of course, the sculpture's head. And I just felt if I just pulled this image up and we started working on this, it's going to look a little odd and you're going to wonder where it, what's that head from? Well, it's from this sculpture here. And the reason why I want to work on this specific image is because it's very easy to see the overlays that we're going to be applying to it. So let me just make the film strip just a little smaller, give us a little more room for the image, and let's go up to masking. And we're going to add a subject mask. So I'm going to select subject. And by default, you'll get this red overlay. This is the basic red overlay that has been in Lightroom forever, right? Well, this, the way the behavior of this overlay is by default is it will show it as soon as you apply the mask, subject mask, you see it. And then once you see it, once you start doing adjustments, it will go away. Now, if you don't like the red overlay though, you could change it. Go to these three dots and you could see that we have some options here. We have a color overlay on black and white. So you have the red overlay still there, but the rest of the image, the image, part of the image that isn't selected is in black and white. Below that, we have an image on black and white. So we got rid of the red overlay. We just see a color image of what is selected. And the part that isn't selected is black and white. And then below that, we have image on black. So this helps. Maybe you've got some haloing going on. You'll be more apt to see it with this setting. Below that, we have image on white. A lot of times, sometimes you'll get this kind of smudging from darker areas of the image onto lighter areas in the image. This overlay will help you see that. Below that, we have white on black. And this basically is our mask. And you can see how, how good of a job it did with the mask. Let's go back to the color overlay. All right, now, as I mentioned, as it is now, we have this red overlay. And as soon as I do an adjustment, it will disappear. Let's do an adjustment. Let's open up the shadows. Let's add some texture and add some clarity. Okay, just a little clarity. All right, so I did an adjustment. The overlay disappeared. It, what if I want to see it again? Well, you could do one of three things. You could click this checkbox, show overlay, and that will toggle it on and off. Or you could hit the O key on your keyboard, for O for overlay. It'll toggle it off and on every time you hit the O key. Or you could go over the image and find the pin for the overlay. Because this is a subject mask, it will have a little like head and shoulders as a pin. Just hover over the pin and you'll see the overlay. So there's three different ways you could have the overlay reappear. Now let's go back to this three dots. See this automatically toggle overlay? Watch what happens when I uncheck that. The overlay's there. This setting will have that overlay always show. It will only disappear when you move a slider. And you can see it disappeared while I'm moving the black slider. But as soon as I let go of the slider, it reappears. I don't like that one. So I'm going to keep that toggled on to automatically toggle my overlay. Now, let's go back to these three dots here and show pins and tools. Okay, right now we see this pin here. And see the way it's working is we see the pin. I'm hovered over the image. If I come off the image, the pin disappears. That's because I'm in auto mode, auto show mode. If I go here to the show pins and tools, you can see I'm in auto mode. That's the behavior of auto mode. Let's go to always mode, you'll always see the pin. Below that, we have selected. If you have more than one pin or more than one mask, so you have more than one pin, when you are on selected, you'll only see the pin that is active. In this case, I only have the one anyway. Uh, below that, we have never. You'll just never see the pin. Now, so far, I prefer auto, by the way. Now, so far, I've showed you the different overlays we could use and what we could do with the pins. All this is also available down here in the toolbar. The toolbar is this little strip of real estate that is directly below the image, but above the film strip. If you don't see the toolbar, 
you may have it toggled off. To toggle the toolbar off and on, hit the T key on your keyboard and it will toggle it off and on. And once it's on and you see the toolbar, you see on the left hand side, we have the overlay mode there. And then we have the what to do with the pins. Oh, auto, always selected, and never. So you may prefer to access those over there. Now let's continue. Slow, uh, show unselected mask pins. Let me, um, let me add another mask to this. Let me go up here, create a new mask, and we're going to select this guy. All right, so now I have two pins. I have the subject pin, and I have the mask pin. Right now the mask pin is the active one. Let me come over here and just do an adjustment to the sky. I'm going to just add some clarity, all right? So when I hover over the image, because I'm in auto mode, we'll see both of those pins. If I go over here and uncheck this show unselected mask pins, what will happen in only the active pin will show. This other pin isn't showing. I prefer to see all the pins in auto mode. So when I hover over the image, I want to see every mask on there and I want to see all the pins. So that's why I always have this checked. That's just the way I prefer to do it. That way, right now, the active one is the sky. So anything I do will affect the sky. If I want to go back to the subject, I could just click on that pin. Now that one's the active pin, and I could do adjustments on that. That's the way I prefer to use it. Now, what about the color of the overlay? Let's do this real quick. Let me uh, just delete all masks. And let's go back and we'll do another subject mask. And let's talk about the color of the overlay. By default, it's this red color. If you go up to these three dots and go all the way to the bottom, you get these color overlay settings. This is this little color picker. Let's move that out of the way. Another way to get to this color picker in a faster way is just click on this little swatch right here and you'll get that color picker. Now you have some options here. You could, of course, change the color. Just hover over the color swatch and you'll get an eyedropper and you can just click and get a different color overlay. Let's say you like something like that. You could change the opacity with this slider here. You also have some presets here. So you go back to the original red or you could go to any other color that's in here if you prefer. Let's stay with the original red. Now up here in the mode, it's the same thing we had with the three dots and in the toolbar. We could do different, you know, image on black and white and so on. So you could change that here as well if you want to. And finally on the bottom, uh, what do you want the overlay to show? By default it shows the affected areas. You could have it show the unaffected areas if you prefer. That way you're seeing everything that you're going to be adjusting without the overlay showing on it. Meaning I'm going to, the adjustments I do here will affect the sculpture's head, right? So if I come in here and I again open up shadows, but the overlay is affecting the same way. I could hit the O key and see how it's still going on the back or the parts of the image, I should say, that aren't being adjusted. So I prefer the affected areas. That's the way I like to do it. And really, that's it. That's really the uh, power you have with Lightroom's masking's new overlay kind of system. You have a lot more options, a lot more versatility. And I think it will help you better uh, get a better mask because there are some times where it doesn't select, like, and this was easy, right? It selected the subject perfectly. But there are some times it misses a little, and maybe one of these other overlay modes will help you better find, make sure it's getting what you want, want it to get, and then you could add or subtract from the mask accordingly if you need to. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <music>